Um, welcome to our little interview series for SEBI and for the Konrad Adenauer Foundation. My name is Gregory Ryan. I am here with Assistant Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations from the United Nations, Mr. Edmond Moulet. Uh, Mr. Moulet, you have participated in our security conference and um, you spoke on the uh, main title of the conference on security and responsibility in a multipolar world. Would you like to present two or three key ideas? Well, thank you. Thank you very much for this, uh, this opportunity. Yes, indeed, I, I participated uh, representing the uh, Department of Peacekeeping Operations of the United Nations. And the, this topic of this conference, of course, is extremely broad. So during my presentation, I tried really to focus on uh, the expertise of, of the UN in, in peacekeeping and uh, referring to our 16 peacekeeping operations, 122,000 people we have deployed on the ground, our budget, uh, the mandates we receive from the uh, Security Council, the challenges uh, we have on the ground implementing those mandates. Um, 16 peacekeeping missions and every single mission is completely different from each other so we have to adapt to the different circumstances political historical uh, social in, in, in every in each of these of these countries uh, so this is what I was trying to to explain and also uh, telling the audience uh, talking about the challenges uh, that the future will be presenting to us we are already working for example on the three S's Somalia Sahel and Syria we have already teams working on different scenarios and contingency planning. We don't know what's going to happen in those three countries and we have to be, or areas, we have to be ready to respond. And uh, we also uh, discussed uh, in, in my presentation the issue of uh, climate change. Uh, this will certainly force people to migrate. The, uh, some uh, economic challenges around the world also that will force people to uh, seek uh, a better future somewhere else and this will present some challenges and build pressures that will uh, present risks for the stability and security in some parts of, of the world. So uh, I thought it was a very important venue in order to present this uh, perspective from uh, United Nations peacekeeping and especially because in this world, especially in the future, not one single organization will be able to tackle any of these challenges alone. So the issue of partnerships, this is something I also referred to, is extremely important with regional organizations, with sub-regional organizations, with countries, with the North and the South and everybody uh, in order to build on what we can all add to solve these, uh, these issues and, and these problems. And one of the um, keywords in the title is responsibility, and many participants have then talked about the key concept, responsibility to protect. And um, there was also talk about this rather new idea of responsibility while protecting, and the way um, we understood it from our Brazilian friends, it was often explained that added transparency and accountability vis-a-vis -vis the Security Council. Um, do you have a... a a comment on that? Yes, uh, the uh, R2P policy or responsibility to protect is a very new concept and it's still being, uh, being developed, uh, not really implemented in many places. Uh, there are uh, countries or places in the world where uh, civilians are subject to repression, violence uh, uh, from their own governments and the international community is not responding to that. They're not helping or assisting them. In other parts of the world where we have peacekeeping missions, we have a specific mandate from the Security Council in order to do so. For example, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Darfur, in South Sudan, that's part of our mandate and we're trying to uh, implement that. It's not always, not always easy. But then you have outside of pure peacekeeping missions, the, the concept of responsibility to protect that, for example, in Libya, this was raised by some member countries uh, of the United Nations that uh, the regime was rep uh, repressing, they were killing, uh, uh, violating basic human rights uh, of, of their own population. And this was used as a, uh, uh, a reason for the Security Council to authorize these uh, strikes by, by NATO. You have some countries that believe that 
responsibility to protect or this mandate that was given by the Security Council for NATO to intervene uh, was also used for regime change. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think that this debate is a useful one in order to clarify really what happened because this is also a precedent for future operations in, uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Moulet, on the second part of the conference, you will participate in a discussion on challenges and opportunities for strategic cooperation between South and North. Mm -hmm. um, could you again present us some of your key ideas on that? Indeed. Um, as I first mentioned in my first uh, presentation in, in the morning, um, I said that currently in the world, especially, I mean, certainly in the future, not one single organization, uh, in the UN or outside of the UN system, can really tackle the risks and the challenges that the, the, the world will be facing. So there's an absolute need to have partnerships, to build partnerships between the North and the South, between different, the World Organization, the United Nations, and regional and sub-regional organizations. You have uh, some expertise in the, these regional and sub-regional organizations. They know best uh, how to deal with cultural issues. They sometimes know the language, uh, cultural issues, more than uh, countries, organizations that are from outside the, the, the region. So this is something that we have to build on. And I think that there is uh, a need also to add the different uh, capacities and uh, specialties that each organization has in order to, to, work, uh, to work together. Um, the, the world is, will be facing, is facing already, as we all know, uh, many uh, hot spots around the world, very, a lot of instability, etc. So I think that distributing this responsibility and working together uh, mm -hmm. with everybody is, is needed. The UN were already doing that, uh, especially with the African Union in, in Africa. Our mission in uh, Sudan in Darfur is a hybrid mission, a joint African Union, United Nations mission. And the appointment of the uh, head of the mission and all the leadership of the mission is done jointly by both uh, organizations. Uh, we're working with the African Union in Somalia, for example, in the AMISOM. This is the African Union uh, mission in Somalia, which is more than a peacekeeping mission, it's a fighting force, but we are providing all the logistics, all the financial support, uh, uniforms, training, etc., for that, for that force. And we have also uh, military planners working with the African Union on the operational, operational side. We also work with uh, ECOWAS, this is the economic organization for, for Western Africa, and they're dealing with uh, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, uh, with Mali, and they're, in, in, they're involved in Liberia, and in Ivory Coast and Cote d'Ivoire. In Liberia and Cote d'Ivoire, we have uh, peacekeeping missions, and we work together with ECOWAS. And most of the troops we have in those two countries come from neighboring countries, from, from, uh, from ECOWAS. Or in Haiti, for example, uh, there's a, another way the United Nations is working in partnership with UNASUR, because as we know, in Haiti, uh, more than 70% of the troops of the United Nations come from Latin America, uh, from Brazil, from Uruguay, from China, Argentina, from Chile, from Peru, from Ecuador, from my own country, Guatemala. Uh, so we're all working there together. So you have the financial support from the General Assembly and countries that finance these operations, but then you have the troops coming from, from the South. And then you have the local, the host government, uh, that is the one who has asked for this mission to be deployed there and who gives us the vision and the guidelines of what we have to do in, in that country. So that you, there you have another kind of, of partnership. Another one we have developed is in Afghanistan between the UN, uh, the Afghan government, and NATO, also working on so all sorts of different issues, especially now in the transition towards 2014, mm -hmm. where uh, NATO troops and ISAF troops will be leaving mm -hmm. and the UN will be occupying more, more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, in an earlier talk with uh, the, um, um, the head of the European delegation to Brazil, there was um, a similar tone that she said that today there is no far away anymore in the world, that everything is connected. If there is a disturbance in one part, other parts can feel it. So there is a, a sort of consensus already around several organizations that what you propose under UN leadership that this responsibility mm -hmm. is shared. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that it's been interview. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.